Good day, everyone. Welcome to our webinar session. This webinar is brought to you by IES Research, a team that provides research publication with an engaging voice through the adaptation of the IES storyboard of Why, Why, What. We design visuals and animations to supplement your research findings, maximize the understanding of the discoveries, and share your story globally to improve research visibility and increase scholarly engagement. My name is Iris Xu, and I'm your host today. Today, we're happy to have Dr. Wang Wei Fu, the Chief Consultant of IES Research, as our speaker. Wei Fu used to work for Thomson Reuters for the business of IP and science with decades of experience in scholarly communication. Today his sharing is on Draw Graphical Abstract. The sharing will be about 20 minutes and then we have 10 minutes for questions and answers. You're welcome to ask questions during the sharing. Simply type your question into the Q&A box at the toolbar at the button of the meeting screen we will collect those questions and answer them at the Q&A session later. Now, without further ado, let me pass the ground to Wei Fu to share the screen and start our session today. Thank you. My name is Wei Fu Wong from IES Research. Today, our topic is Draw Graphical Abstract. I will share about the story showing scale, and that includes number one, to show the story. Number two, the hero shot. Right after, I will give you a few essential tips of graphical design. That includes number three, information graphic continuum, and number four, techniques of improving relevance. In the topic of to show the story, there are five rules of story showing. Number one, show and don't tell. Unlike storytelling, Showing a story is about telling a story with visual, minimal narrative, and no motion. It is different from reading a book or watching a movie, but it is like admiring the mystic smile of Mona Lisa. We do not let the words bore us, but we let the visual to show the message or the benefit. Number two, use context. Context is a setting of a story. And in this case, we are using the visual effect to speak a thousand words. We usually use picture to tell a context. For example, a few water droplets from a tap signifies water shortage. We could also enhance the context using numbers like statistics or trends. Such context will give hint of the right assumption to the viewer before looking into the detail. Number three, show problem and solution. Our target viewers are researchers and potentially we are communicating to the researchers coming from different disciplines. Constantly, they are looking for collaboration and they are interested in problem and solution that are relevant to their work. That's how we get their attention. And there are other ways to improve the relevance using graphical design skill. I will share more about this in the last session. Number four, reveal hidden things. To justify the time taken by the viewers, the story that you show has to be unknown, new, and what we call it in the research publication, the novelty. Some researchers believe that they have many novelties to tell. But in this case, it is always good to focus on one at a time. Number five, let the visual move. Definitely we know that a static visual cannot move, but we can use the rule of thirds to create a visual flow, making the pictures alive in a visual. Rule of thirds is a guideline to imagine breaking an image down into thirds, both horizontally and vertically, so that we have nine parts within. It is commonly used in design, paintings, photographs, and films. It is not a fixed rule, but if you place points of interest in the intersection or along the lines, the visual will become more balanced and will enable a viewer to interact with the visual more naturally. 
Study have shown that when viewing images, people eyes usually go to one of the intersection points, most naturally rather than the center of the shot. The rule of thirds works well with this natural way of viewing an image rather than against it. If you look at the image of the green balloon, the main character, the balloon, is located close to the intersection point at the top left side. Naturally, the viewer could look from top to bottom and then from left to right before admiring the landscape at the right side. There are more than one visual flow and it depends on the individual preference. But again, generally, all visual flow follow the rule of thirds naturally. If you now look at the lady image, eyes are the attraction and viewer could gaze up and down at the center vertically before looking at the left right at the bottom. Interestingly, this is an advertisement. And the brand name, Vaseline, is the last thing that the designer wants you to see. The idea of the visual flow is beauty associated to Vaseline, and it is not the other way. If you look at the movie Thor, the same approach applies. Thor stands at the two intersections of the right. Naturally, he is the main character before we move our eyes to the Mjolnir, which is the Thor's hammer. The rule of third is a good rule to apply even for your daily photography using smartphone. A wireframing your poster prior to designing it. A wireframe is an invisible guide to help a designer to lay out the page. Mostly, all the smaller parts of your poster are square or rectangular. They fit nicely with the rule of third. Understanding the five rules of story showing, it is now possible for you to appreciate a great visual, a great picture, a great painting, a great poster, or even a great user interface. But there's one more thing that you need to know, and that is the hero shot. What is the hero shot? It is a visual representation of the protagonist. In my earlier sharing, I mentioned about the main characters like the balloon, the lady, and Thor, and all these are the protagonists. But what is the protagonist of a research? It is very important for you to choose one protagonist, but not many protagonists for one visual. There's always an exception, but for a good start, Seek to one protagonist for one hero shot. In a research, the following can be the protagonist. A new observation that you discover and that helps other researchers to do further work. A new concept that you develop in improving or solving an issue. A new process that you observe and develop in relation to a bigger problem. A new product that you invented or a new object that you discover. It can also be a new problem or issue that you learn that will help other researchers to look into it and to accelerate the process of finding a solution. A good protagonist is a solution or a potential solution of a problem. Using the storyboard concept shared in the previous webinar section, the solution or the novelty is the what of your research work and what addresses the why and big why of your work. I know over 90% of the research publication are about work in progress. It is not a surprise that your novelty is a potential solution and you're inviting people to read your work, to cite your work in continuing and expanding your effort. So novelty is not necessarily a final outcome. It can be work in progress or result toward ultimate goal. As long as you feel that your work has reached a milestone, please do not hesitate to share in a form of graphical abstract or poster. Now knowing the protagonist of your research, it is time to combine it with the five rules of showcasing to form a good hero shot. 
But bear in mind that the hero shot of a research is not about showing an answer. It is about a new novelty that leads to more good questions. That is why your work is important for other researchers to read and to cite. And a hero shot is helping like a movie teaser in getting more viewers to look forward to reading your scientific publication. So how could we use a hero shot? A hero shot can be used directly as a graphical abstract. Usually graphical abstract is submitted upon the request of some publishers together with your manuscript. One quick check is always making sure your graphical abstract relates to all your keywords. That means if you look at the graphical abstract alone, you will be able to link back to the keywords. It is about the context and we will need to interpret your graphical abstract visually to the keywords without knowing them. If it is unclear, then you need to use a few graphical techniques to improve the relevance. I will share a few techniques to improve the relevance in the last session. Let's say you want to make an infographic. The hero shot is enriched with the headlines, which is usually a catchy title and additional statistics or numbers that are visually attractive. Infographic is very useful for researchers to promote their work online or to invite viewers to their workshop. If you are attending a conference, you can use the hero shot to build a good poster. There are unfortunately strict conference guidelines to follow, and likely you need to include lots of narrative figures and charts. And all this will distract the attention away from the hero shot. There are ways to improve a research poster visibility. Examples using attractive color or position to illuminate the hero shot. Or retitle the poster with a more attractive headline without breaking the conference rule. Here are the samples of three different types of visual. The graphical abstract the infographic and the research poster. By looking at the area coverage of the hero shot, the research poster can usually accommodate about 15% of the total area. Whereas for an infographic, hero shot is significantly prominent with up to 25% of the total area. Knowing that the hero shot is visually well designed and it is your research protagonist, Locating it at the right spot based upon the rule of thirds, the hero shot will become the starting point of a visual flow. Refer to the sample of infographic. The hero shot is located at the top left intersection. Naturally, the hero shot attracts the attention first and letting the viewer to go around the infographic clockwise. It is a good natural flow. If you look at the research poster, the hero shot is smaller than the one in infographic and the viewer will likely start from either the title or the hero shot. Even the viewer start from the hero shot, the flow is relatively complex. There are two ways to improve the visibility of this poster. One is relighting a catchy title by highlighting the benefit instead of saying applications. Another way is improving the relevance of the hero shot using graphical design technique. From now on, I will focus on graphical design skill and let us begin with the information graphic continuum. Broadly, there are three types of visuals. The first one from the left is data visualization and from a designer perspective without the domain knowledge, it is abstract. There are different types of data visualization, example, graph, and chart, and are commonly used by researchers to show the results. As we move along the continuum from left to right, the visuals are increasingly informative in the forms of mathematical expression and schematic diagram. Both one, data visualization, and two, illustrated diagrams are commonly used by researchers in their publication and for most of the time, they are monochrome. 
again they are visually abstract by viewing at them without reading the manuscript. That is not helpful for making a good hero shot. And without a good hero shot, it is challenging to make a good infographic or poster. The most figurative visuals are called representative illustrations. It basically uses sophisticated graphic software tool like Adobe Illustrator to reconstruct an object that is close to the real one. I do not recommend researchers to learn this graphic software unless you are keen in graphical design. Researcher can outsource this to a professional designer. But the most important thing is, the researcher must be able to imagine how to construct the object visually by drafting on a piece of paper. Your imagination shall not be restricted by your graphical design skill as a professional designer can do whatever you want at an affordable price. There are a few techniques that I would like to share with you on how to improve the relevance of your visual. This helps to captivate your imagination, whether you want to draw it on your own or you want to outsource it. Techniques of improving relevance. First, data visualization. There are lots of different fancy graphs and charts out there and it's up to you to take advantage of some of them. Instantaneously, by combining them into one poster, you are making a statistical infographic. But the simplest way to make your message to be relevant is adding a headline. A good headline is simple and catchy. It promises a solution or benefit to a problem, though your solution may not be ready yet. And it is good to be specific with numbers and avoid passive voice. Take for example, each year 1.7 million deaths of children under 5 are linked to the environment. It is a very specific headline and erases hope because we know the cost. It is definitely not a solution, but it invites other researchers to find out more from you because they might be able to contribute with their research coming from different disciplines. Second, illustrated diagram like mathematical expression. It can be relevant to the researcher of the same discipline, but it can still be difficult to understand the research work without a scenario. A scenario can be created by making a variety of stages or simply making a comparison. The same can be applied to the schematic diagrams. But this will not work well for the non-domain expert as they have no clue about the diagram without understanding all the words within. In this case, I would recommend you adding the meaning with an obvious, like a rag or coconuts. These are not the reconstructed object with sophisticated 3D view, but they are easily understood by viewing the frame or the 2D sketch of a rag or coconuts. A simple human sketch can add lots of meaning to the visuals. In these two visuals, you can be totally lost if you don't have the human bodies included. The one on the left, by magnifying at the human sketch, helps to understand the human bodies. For the visual on the right, it is understandable that the tumor is extracted from the human lungs and the laboratory test is visually elaborated at the right side of the visual. Adding a sketch of any obvious object will bring meaning to the visual. At the same time, however, for any good visual design, we shall minimize the obvious. Take for example, it is no meaning to add the word human body if the sketch is already obvious. So the obvious is good, but we shall not repeat the obvious when a good design is simplicity. Third, representative illustrations. These are the drawings that are usually done by professional designers. It is obviously not self-explanatory if you are not the domain expert. There are a few techniques that you can use to improve relevance if you can share your imagination or your view to the designer. Cut view. This is commonly used to show the internal part of an object like an engine or a human part. 
Both features show the internal details without losing the external views that provide the shape of the Elvis, a turbine engine, and a human heart. If necessary, additional information can be added like the throw arrows. Explode view. This is useful if the object is made of multiple components or multiple layers. Exploding the objects help to reveal complex details that relate to the research work. Such view, like the one at the bottom right, allows the researcher to make a better meaning to their observation like micrograph or spectrograms by linking to the explode view. Lastly, multiple angle view. Through object reconstruction, it is possible to view an object from different angles. Each view needs to disclose useful information and it is unlikely to use more than four angles. There's always an exception and the researcher shall decide on how to showcase the finding by a minimal number of angles. Again, a good design is simplicity. In summary, there are five steps to draw a graphical abstract. Step 1. Identify your research novelty as a protagonist. Step 2. Review all the graphs and charts in your publication. Step 3. Select the most representative graphs and charts and preferably not choose more than three. Step 4. Combine them into a hero shot together with additional visuals like schematic diagram or even reconstructed pictures. Step 5. Improve the relevance using graphical design and if necessary, could explore the idea of cut views, explode view, or even multiple angle view. Like definitely needs practices and I hope this sharing will provide you guidance to start drawing. What do you learn today? In summary, number one, learn to appreciate a great hero shot. Number two, learn to use hero shot for poster design. And number three, learn to use a few graphical design techniques to improve the relevance. I hope you find the sharing is useful. Thank you for listening. Thank you, Weifu, for the insightful sharing. Uh, now we open the ground for questions and answers. Uh, we don't have much time today, but we, I think we can still answer a few questions. Uh, you're welcome to type in your questions in the chat box or in the Q&A sections. So let me see if we have any questions at this moment. One question is that, does a graphical abstract bring more visibility to a paper? Well, thanks, Iris. From our experience, the graphical abstract alone does not bring more visibility. It is a matter of how you use the graphical abstract, the application of graphical abstract. If you use it in a conference poster, in workshop as a workshop flyer, or in social media sharing, you're able to get attention to the work. So graphic abstract is really serve as a teaser, but you also need to disseminate it. And uh, I think uh, our next webinar next week about promote, that could be a good session to know more about how to use the uh, graphical abstract or infographic promoting your work using social media. Right. And another question is, is it appropriate to put together the solutions in the research paper? It is because um, as it is going to be a publication, unless your intent is going to file a pattern, which not going to share out very soon, then probably it's not. But it is something that you're going to publish as a scientific paper, simply it means it's going to go public then the answer is yes, you should share the solution. Uh, but I think you also hear me saying earlier on that uh, a lot of our research work is really work in progress. A solution is not a final uh, solution, but it is something that you still work on it and still waiting for testing, feedback, and many other reasons. So it is always good that you share your so-called your solution or work in progress solution 
for people to give you the uh, eyeballs, feedback to make it better. And this is the whole spirit of scholarly communication. So can graphical abstract apply to the conceptual framework? Uh, it's a, interesting because um, a lot of people, when we do graphical abstract, they realize that if, if you're in the technology research, you do have a clear object, like a product or a, a, a chemist, uh, like a, a molecule or even a concept that is clearly defined. But when you think about something that is still in the stage of conceptuals, uh, mostly it's quite difficult to draw something. Uh, you might end up like a bunch of boxes and circles, that sort of stuff. Uh, you still could do it as a graphical abstract, although the visual white is not so attractive. Um, but then over time, you definitely can improve your graphical abstract as your work is in progress. Um, if it is about, especially on a politic, uh, in social science research, uh, some of the approaches you can use comic. Uh, but so far, I think that is not commonly used uh, because a comic is something not easy to draw. And uh, sometimes the great humor of comic to reflect your research work can be quite sensitive as well. Now, another question. The graphical abstract should be our real data or prepare a new one for easier uh, understanding for the readers? As I say, the graphical abstract is a reflection of novelty. And if you go by our storyboard, it is the what part of it. So it has to be factual evidence based. So it cannot be uh, frictional. Uh, so in this case, this is the, pretty much the outcome of your work supported by the data. Now, need to know that the graphical abstract would be able to tell everything. But it is a teaser to invite people to look at other part of the storyboard, like why and so on, or how, and so on. So these are the data part, particularly like how is where the data part is. So yes, it had to be as accurate as possible. In fact, we took a lot of uh, effort to ensure that graphical abstract that designed for uh, our researcher, uh, check and double check and triple check, making sure that every uh, minute detail is accurate, even the color and so on, because we don't want to send a wrong uh, message to the audience when they look at the teaser or the graphical abstract. Do you recommend any software for designing graphics? If you simply want to do uh, infographic um, that go along with some of the ready-made features, you definitely can use uh, a common one like canva.com. Uh, it is I think you need to pay for the uh, image, but the whole uh, software usage probably is free. I don't use that a lot, uh, but I know it's quite popular for people using uh, doing infographic. Uh, the other one I mentioned earlier on is the Adobe Illustrator uh, and also some other graphic software like Photoshop. Those are quite useful. Uh, for you to learn if you think that you want to go into this. But again, if you need to know that if you're a researcher, you really don't want to get into that uh, learning a new software of drawing. And the other reason is that no matter how you learn, there's always a limitation. What can you draw? So you rather like leave it to your uh, professional designer to do the job and let your imagination go wild and uh, come out as much thing as possible to reflect your thought and ideas. I think we still have time for one more question. So uh, I th the, the question is, if the publisher didn't request for a graphical abstract, shall I draw one and post it at ResearchGate? I think so. I mean, one part, important part of research is that you don't stop at the point of publishing. Even when you publish in a high impact factor journal or even when you publish in Nature, uh, that doesn't make people will have eyeball on your work. We, we have done some interesting analysis shown that uh, somebody had published their work in a top journal, highly cited, uh, high impact factor. But again, over years, no citation. And that simply showed that uh, the journal can be good and famous, but ultimately you still want people to look at your paper, but not the journal. 
So it is important. It's good that you have a graphical abstract and uh, try to promote that toward the right audience. And the other thing I think it's good to know is that graphical abstract can even make it to simple video um, by making add on some music and catchy keyword. You can turn graphical abstract into video as well. Uh, in fact, I think uh, the next webinar about promote will talk more about this as well. Thank you, Weifu, for answering your questions. And thank you for everyone uh, having such a wonderful questions. Uh, I think due to the time constraints, we will uh, end the session today. But you're welcome to join our upcoming webinars, which is the Promote Your Work Online, uh, which is uh, next week, I think on um, Wednesdays and Friday. Both are the same section, so you're welcome to register and join. Or if you uh, have trouble accessing to Zoom, you can always come to our YouTube broadcasting. So thank you again for your participation. And if you do have any other questions, feel free to drop us an email, and we're happy to answer them offline. Thank you very much for your time, and uh, we hope to see you in the upcoming webinars. Thank you and have a good day.